We have all been waiting for this. The first X870 review of the season, and I wanted something special to kick it off. Today, we're reviewing the excellent X870 Hours Elite Wi-Fi 7 Ice from Gigabyte. Literally, the only motherboard I could get my hands on ahead of the official X870 release date. Seriously, someone uh, messed up big time because I pre-ordered it like everybody else and received it 10 days before its official launching date and uh gigabyte yeah please mess up more often now starting with the obvious our board comes in a six layered ATX format so as far as PCIe signal installation comes and lifespan well fundamentals are covered most importantly design wise the x870 elite ice wears its name well, uh, we are in the widest white you ever uh, saw on a motherboard. Even the plugs, the sockets are all white, which seems like a small thing to say, but it actually is quite impressive uh, um, in, in, in person. It really pops up quite a bit. I mean, enough for me to make a point out of it. All the cooling components show a very nice brush finish. They're very premium. The overall theme feels very aggressive, angular, even mineral. It shines. I mean, it's really, really shiny. Very precious feel. We do have some integrated RGB under the, the chipset heat shield, but it really doesn't do anything to me. I find it a little bit tacky and cheap. But most importantly, we do have four RGB connectors for a more customized LED expression. I am sounding so intellectual today. CPU socket wise, our AM5 is returning to our great pleasure, meaning that your X870 powered motherboards are all back compatible to the 7000 series of Ryzen processors. And since there is, again, not much difference between the Ryzen 7000 and the Ryzen 9000 series, I mean, really nothing much different at all. This is one expense you really don't have to consider. Chipset wise, well, it is where most of the excitement for me is. Our X870 chipset is cheaper than the X670e chipset, but brings all the same PCIe 5.0 integration, including the GPU export PCIe 5.0 integration, which again was on the more expensive E type of chipset. And the entire thing on a single 7 watt PCH, uh, unlike its dual chipset predecessor. But most noticeably, what the X870 allows to do here is to deeply affect what all of the brand's entry level boards can now do in terms of bandwidth, of PCA standard, etc etc in a very very good way now vrm wise the x870 elite ice has 2060 amps power stages organized in eight parallel phases plus two plus two we do have 1200 amps worth of vrm power 960 of which are cpu centric and that's adequate and, and more than enough to run and and moderately overclock any Ryzen 9 compatible with this motherboard. But the VRM this year is smaller, less powerful than the one we had on its predecessor, the, the X670 uh, Elite. And, and I'm failing to understand why, because I've never seen that. Usually, generation to generation, we have either a very similar VRM or an upgrade. I've never seen a, a, a VRM downgrade. So if you're listening Gigabyte, enlight us. And what makes even less sense is that on the other hand, the cooling blocks are so much better than the one we've seen last year, where the VRM was more powerful. This year, heat blocks are amazing. The main block supporting wall is tall. It is massive. It has several long winglets to extend radiating surface and the all top by a large, very large area radiating roof. Great stuff. The side block is dense and shows the same winglet design. Uh, they are both linked by an eight millimeter white pipe to ensure an homogeneous spread of the heat among both blocks. And if you really want to go into the details, uh, both blocks provide a direct thermal padded contact to both chokes and power stages for a more intimate and immediate heat relief. Basically, we have an upgraded uh, uh, cooling solution for downgraded VRM. 
And unsurprisingly and obviously thermals, well, react greatly when I do my stress test. With an R9 7900X clocked at 5.3 GHz and after an hour long synthetic stress test, both main and side block uh, stayed within a few degrees from each other and peaked at a very, very low 53 degrees Celsius, more or less. This motherboard wears its ice uh, name very very well because with those kind of temperatures it will translate in a very long lasting product a very resilient very stable uh, 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 product if you are going to have any problem on this motherboard chances are it will not be from the vrm so despite being annoyed by the fact that i see a marginally uh, uh, smaller vrm it still is plenty of power it still can do everything the previous elite could do and i cannot say more but at least it can do what it could do and for that i'm gonna give it a 6.5 out of 10 very respectfully very nice 6.5 even a 7 out of 10 i would have given an 8 if we had the same vrm uh, probably a little bit more if we had a, a, a more powerful, but in this case, I think 7 is honest. Now, RAM-wise, the X870 Elite Ice can support up to 256GB of DDR5 RAM, configured in a dual channel, with a maximum single stick speed of 8GHz. Only could we hope to see those high clocks, 8GHz, on master tier motherboard last year, the X670 uh, Master, which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. And the fact that we see it here today on an hour's entry level, I mean, that is a statement on its own. Hours gigabyte means business. And that's 1600 megahertz more than last year. I mean, I've never seen such a clock jump generation to generation. Yeah, big difference from what we've just seen with the VRM. But remember, this is a single stick uh, a clock. If you add more sticks, clocks go down, but we can add a 64 gigabyte DDR5 RAM single stick. I mean, that is a lot of memory you can run at 8 gigahertz. And yes, you will see uh, uh, some gaming improvements, even though RAM is not the first thing will affect the gaming performances, but with 1600 megahertz, you will start uh, uh, visibly uh, seeing some FPS increase, more than some. And when it comes to professionals, I mean, video editing and stuff like that, this is pure gold, pure gold for less than a $300 motherboard. Big memory kudos to Gigabyte for this. Now, storage-wise, again, some new stuff here. We have four M.2 solid state drive connectors, three of which are PCIe 5 enabled, coming from only one on the X670 Elite. That's a max data swap, up to 128 gigabit per second per PCIe 5.0 enabled stick. I do want to note the screwless M.2 solid state drive locking mechanism, always a plus, plus but most importantly, the M.2 solid state drives heat shield are now all screwless. You can take them on and off without a single screw. Something we had seen on the Intel uh, version of this board on the Aorus A series, who just got released a few months ago and that Gigabyte wanted to showcase. So very happy to see that it becomes now standard even on the hours entry level. I do need to mention that all the heat shields are rather thick and thermopadded, enough at least to avoid any obvious thermal throttling issues. And finally, I do have to mention our four SATA 3 plugs for our uh, legacy drives. Now it's done. Now, export-wise, we do have a fully PCIe 5.0 enabled 16-lane export. Remember, only the more expensive X670E powered motherboard last year could do that. Now we have it on entry-level X870 motherboards. And obviously, but I say it anyways, this is where you want your uh, GPU placed for optimal gaming performances, hence the rather imposing slot reinforcement and the updated and rather sturdy GPU ejection mechanism. Mm. The two other 16 slots are slower and varies in speed, but now comes a whole bunch of PCIe bifurcations, and I'm going to try to go 
one by one so I get uh, I leave nothing behind. If you do use your PCIe 4.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive, the PCIe 4.0 export becomes disabled. That is one. If you use any or both of these PCIe 5.0 enabled connectors, you'll cut the main GPU export lane count and well uh, its bandwidth by two, which is not such a big deal since we don't have yet on the market any graphics card who can go beyond eight lanes at PCIe 5.0 uh, standard. Not great for future proofing, but as of right now, it's really not a big deal. Now back IO-wise, a little note on the fact that we do have an integrated back light. It's nice, but well, kind of expected. And starting from the left, we have our flashback button for CPU-less BIOS update, a must, in my opinion, an updated Wi-Fi 7 dual band adapter with more than double the bandwidth seen on the Wi-Fi 6, a special mention for gigabyte efforts to come up with a plug-in plug-out solution for our Wi-Fi antenna. That's great. Next come a full menu of USB plugs, including, and that's important, two USB 4.0 Type-C. That is 40 gigabit per second per plug. So obviously quite a big uh, bandwidth premium jump on the Elite series. Now, talking of which, they also double up as display port for the integrated graphics, which brings the total integrated graphics plugs to three. A quick mention for our uh, quite a bit of a boring 2.5 gigabit LAN. And finally, our somewhat premium LC 1200 audio codec from Realtek, which is a strong choice for a good playback, but most noticeably, since we have no less than 500 microfarads worth of cleansing capacitor, uh, we also have a very clean audio recording as well. So great for content creators as well as streamers. Overall, as Bakayo goes, a big step forward, both in bandwidth and in connectivity, apart from the 2.5 gigabit LAN, which again uh, is not great. Other than that, happy as a bunny. Now, front panel connector wise, well, the big news here is a 20 gig Type C front panel connector, which makes its apparition on an hour entry level, as well as a front panel HDMI plug for, uh, well, a front panel screen on your chassis. Why not? I, I, I've I've been toying with it. I love the thing and uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Cooling wise, again, some nice improvements um, here. We are now comfortably entering the custom water cooling world since we can now operate two separated water pumps for a dual CPU slash GPU water cooled system, as well as some temps and flow sensors. So yeah, the Elite is now heavily leaning and winking towards the more enthusiastic builders out there. I love it. And to make it perfect, among the usual troubleshooting features such as a debugger and other soldered buttons, we also have for the first time an error OLED screen for much more refined troubleshooting experience. I cannot emphasize how happy I am to see it here. I've been advocating for an error OLED screen on Elite Series for at least two to three years. And I'm so proud of seeing that I have such a big impact on the industry. Now, in conclusion, the X870 RS Elite Wi-Fi 7 Ice will cost you about 290 bucks before taxes, which is exactly what its predecessor used to cost at launch. And despite the slight and annoying VRM reduction, there is nothing the X870 Elite cannot do when compared to its X670 Elite predecessor. So let's put this to rest. The other upgrades largely make up for it. We have a full PCIe 5.0 integration, including GPU export. We got better Wi-Fi 7 connectivity, USB 4, better troubleshooting options with the OLED screen, a real custom water cooling friendly platform, faster, much faster RAM memory, and more DIY friendly features with a more robust GPU removal system. Clearly, Gigabyte is repositioning the Elite here to be able to compete with much higher tier uh, uh, motherboards such as the Strix E from Asus or even the Carbon from MSI. So in short, if you are looking for about the best featured, premium, long lasting, most exciting sub $300 board on the market today, there is simply nowhere else your money wants, begs and needs to be.